sa magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Ay partner in the charismatic. Pero ay mukhang problematic. Charismatic, tiketik, wala ang tik. Last video po si Marvin. Sabi ni Marvin po, kita lang po po. At least yung buhok ako po kayo sa kanya. So, napaka-traffic sa Maynila. Kaya napakaganda na natin po ganda sa Maynila. So, meron po tayo dalawang presentation. Wala po eh, tungkol sa Year of the Poor, sa akin ng Father and then, one more with feelings. Let us talk about Year of the Poor. We're almost ending the year of the Poor. And as you know, we're preparing for the 500 years. Yeah. Kung hindi daw tayo, as you know, kung hindi daw tayo, pinatahan din ang mga Pasquina ng 2021. Ano kaya ngayon ng ating mga Filipino? Kasi 43% are Christians in Asia. And 50% of the 3% are in the Philippines. Kung hindi daw tayo, naging Christiano, baka tayo dominated by Muslims. Yung mga mister daw gusto yun. Kasi pwede daw mga aarang, asawa. Kaya lang mag-iwa ng asawa mo, ang tuloy ko na yun. Okay, so yun. So, let me, you know, usually, I would try to give justice to this. Pero basically, pag alam naman natin, marami sa akin dito, nabawad sa mga mga hindi. So, as a general rule, pag tumalo tayo ng conferences na tulungtahin ng ilan ito, to learn, to unlearn, and to relearn. Whether you're here to learn, yung iba sa akin, we learn something, hindi pa natin alam, kaya we keep on learning. Sabi nila sa 21st century, the learners will be fruitful and successful. We don't stop learning. They learn something new, hopefully, hopefully. The second is unlearning. Alam na natin, unlearning, Sometimes we have to review what we have learned. We want to do one time na hindi masyado accurate, no? O tama. Tulad nga yung mga meron akong color. Ang sabi niya sa akin, eh, Father, eh, mahihirap naman. Kaya mahihirap yun, mga tapad yan, eh. Pero pag pumunta kayo sa Baseco, no? Pag pumunta kayo sa Baseco, ang negosyo ng mga babae dyan, eh, babalat ng bawang. At nagbabalat sila ng bawang for 7 hours para lang kumita ng 45 pesos. Kaya masasabi natin na mahihirap, hindi natin sila tamat. Lahat naman siguro tayo tinatawal. Ang mahirap ay mahirap because they lack the opportunity. Lack the opportunity. Sabi nga, poverty is un-freedom. You lack the freedom to realize your potentials. Kaya we have to do some unlearning. At pangatlo, di pangatlo, relearning. Tayo po kasi marami tayo mga nababasa, nababakinggan, mga conferences, tsaka mga talks, at dahil din. Pero after a while, pag nakalimutan na daw natin, Siyempre, tumatanda tayo, nalilimutan natin. Pag nakalimutan, hindi na masyadong pabisa no, sa ating uh, personal and pastoral lives kung nakalimutan na natin yung mga learnings natin. Kaya sometimes, we have to attend once more no, conferences and talks. No? I think, patong nila? Learn, unlearn, and prepare. Ano ako ng panghapat? Baka may mga ito ng panghapat. So, I don't want to learn, unlearn, and prepare. So, we would, I would just uh, begin with uh, this talk. No? First, sa iba sa atin, gagawin ko na lang, no? Sa Pablo naman tayo. No, tatagawin ko na po para natin na lang magaluma, no? Ang uh, ating uh, uh, ibubuhin niya <laughs> sa umaga dito. Para kayo kung nagulumihan sa ating pagpapahayak. <laughs> gagawin ko na lang kaya para niyo kung ataw. Lalo kung mag-anisip sana ay tatagpag kung sa pag-apay pa nga. Yung professor ko ay si Monsignor Benko. The professor niyo was in the senior bank. Here to belong. So alam po natin, here of the poor, now we focus on Christ. Now we focus on Christ as the poorest man. So if there is someone who is the poorest who ever walked the earth, alam po natin ang pinamatukhang naglakad sa balikang lupa ng ating mga kondisay sa Cristo in the great self-emptying in the letter of Paul to the Philippians. He was God became one of us and died like, a, like an animal, no? As we know, no? People who are crucified are naked. In the sa kanyang dignidad. And he uh, was still totally poor, no? No angels, no consolation from the Father, no army, no? 
to comfort him. He was truly poor and empty when he was on the cross. Because as like St. Paul, he was rich, he became poor, so that by his poverty he would become rich in God's grace and mercy. No? So as, as priests, as clergy, we, 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 we shall always look at uh, Jesus on the cross as the symbol of uh, poverty to the monks. He was poor, became, he was rich, became poor, so that by his poverty he may become rich in God's grace. So our uh, in text that we have is uh, Luke chapter 4, right? So from that, the Spirit of the Lord is upon him to proclaim the good news to the poor. Kaya nakita na po natin dito, mayroong social dimension, the social uh, relevance no? of uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? In my experience, in my experience, uh, in, in Carlos Manila, I mean by work, of sa cooperatives. No? Ako po eh, bago po pinuha sa Carlos Manila ni Monsignor uh, uh, Tanto, ako po eh, babad sa NGO at saka cooperatives. No? Sa, in my work in Bikutan at in Metro Manila. No? Kaya uh, in my experience, napansin ko po yung poverty, there are three kinds of poverty na nire-reflect ko din. No? This uh, year of the poor, that the passive poverty, ah, dalawa lang yung palatakbo. No? Merong kalukaan, na dapat nating tanggapin. You know, the poverty that we have to accept, whether we like it or not. You know, meron namang poverty that we have to reject because it is against God's will. At meron naman, alam naman natin, the ideal poverty that we have to embrace. Yeah. Uh, kaya tatlo yung poverty that I would like to discuss and share with you uh, briefly. You know, Karuhan na uh, kailangan nating tanggapin. Karuhan na dapat nating kalamanin at karuhan na dapat nating so, I'm going to talk to the in the, in the Bible, hindi ko na sinama yung uh, Old Testament. Basically, in the life of Jesus Christ, no? as our ultimate criteria of truth, nakita natin sa, sa buhay ni Cristo, uh, magbibigyan natin kayo ng kopya ito, sa para meron na po kayo. Sa Bible, especially in the New Testament, maraming klaseng poor, sexually excluded, Socially excluded, lepers and mentally handicapped. Example, not uh, poverty. Socially excluded. Religiously marginalized. Prostitutes and tax collectors. Culturally oppressed, as you know that, women and children. During the time of Christ, the socially dependent. Dahil palaging away, kaya maraming bida at uh, mga tulina. Physically handicapped, obviously. The deaf, the mute, the crippled, and the blind, like the lost of the day. The psychologically tormented, spirit possessed, collected. And of course, the spiritually humble, the unwilling, the simple, the fearing, and the repentant sinners. Ito po yung more or less, no? sa panahon ni Cristo, ito po yung mga konteksto na mga mahihiro. Ito yung sinasabi natin na ang unang klaseng uh, poverty. Lahat daw tayo ay poor. All of us are poor. Kaya yung, yung, yung proclamation of Christ, the Spirit of the Lord is among me to proclaim good news to the poor. All of us are poor. No? Ano daw ang pasihan na tayo ay mahirap? Mahirap. No? Uh, sabi ni Giorgio Johan Metz, no, sa kanya, hindi ko naman na-research to, sa Harvard of Spirit, sabi ni Johan Metz, uh, everyone is poor because we're always in need. Okay, yung po ay eh, palaging nakakailangan. That is the sign that you're poor. No? You're always in need. Hindi tayo makontento. Palagi tayo nakakailangan. Palagi tayo in need. No? That is the sign of the poverty of every human being. We are always in need. Perhaps God created us to be poor. So I can say the most that God created us for Himself so that our hearts are restless until it rests in deep. Okay? You're not in need poverty. The human being is the poorest of all creation. Although we are the most beautiful, according to Psalm 8, we're also the poorest. Because we're always in need. By the fact that we're always in need, that we are poor. 
Forget being the Bruni Giovanni's best, no? Your Giovanni's best, no? In the Spain, yeah, in the innate poverty of every human being, no? The poverty of the common place, the poverty of misery, uniqueness and superiority, you are unique, no? Uh, Ang um, example ko pala nila si Cardinal Aguilar, yung uniqueness and superiority. Ang ibig sabihin niya, yung, yung, yung giftedness mo makes you poor. Why? Because uh, you know lang meron mo. <laughs> Parang si Cardinal Aguilar, no? with, with his superior intelligence and giftedness. No? Hindi niya ba alam eh, si Cardinal Aguilar, ginagawa niya parang Hong Kong lang ang uh, patingan. No? At ginagawa niya parang pakaw lang ang Amerika. No? He's traveling most of the time alone. No? Because of his gift. No? Isn't because of your gift, you could be unknown. No? That makes you poor. You're super loyal. You can be your property. Dapat, nagpapahinga na si Cardinal, pero then, paalis na naman. He has, I think, 10 commissions in Rome. If he's a day off siya ng Monday, he has to go out of things. No? Your giftedness can make you poor. Yeah. The, the provisional nature of human being, no? nothing lasts forever. Mindedness, human encounter, but the kind of mama hand and to all, and then the Mamurubika, Sahaboda. The mama hand and the Mamurubika. You have to eat your pride, you have to die for yourself in order to be available for the other. No? And of course, the ultimate the poverty of every human being is there. That's the ultimate poverty of every human being. Even though yung innate poverty that we all experience as human beings. Ang classic book dyan ni Johan Metz, no, The Power of Spirit, if you want to go deeper and, uh, and uh, learn more about that. So the second uh, poverty that I would like to share there no, is yung kung ating uh, uh, issue lalo lalo na sa Pilipinas. Ito nga pinag-uusapan sa APEC, eh, no? Uh, sino ba ang makikinabang sa APEC? Baka ang makikinabang na lang dyan, eh, the, the 40 families that own 76% of our country's wealth, no? makikinabang na lang makikinabang. No? Ang Pilipinas daw is not a democracy because we're not ruled by the majority. The, ang Pilipinas is a plutocracy ruled by the elite. Pagkaya naman ang mga kinawag na naman sa impact na ito. At hindi talaga yung majority who are the poor. Materially poor. Okay. Sabi ni Paul Francis, poverty in the world is a scandal. In a world that there is so much wealth, so many resources to feed everyone. It is unfathomable that there are many hungry children. And there are so many children without an education, so many poor persons. Like in the Philippines, now 10% of Filipinos sleep at night hungry. Ten percent of Filipinos sleep at night hungry. According to SWS, third quarter survey, tumaas na naman daw ang hunger rate. No? Maraming uh, nagubuto na may hirap sa Filipinos. No? Ang problema natin, maraming sa pare, kami natin na lang ito, ang problema natin, hindi yung walang nakainin, ang problema natin, ano tayo hihinto ng magkain. <laughs> I got the shock of my life, ako po ay nasa Maseco, kasi yung CRS, Catholic Relief Services, ay nagkakaroon po ng partnership with Caracas Manila sa Maseco no, as a danger zone area. Uh, Nagpamiting kami sa chapel ng mga residents ng Maseco. Nagpunta rin yung mga leaders ng community, ay hirap, may hindi mga mayas. Pinipay namin yung parish priest ng, uh, ng Maseco. No? Uh, ay gano'n siya ang my life. No? Kasi yung parish priest talaga, obis. O, oh, talaga, obis na obis yung parish priest. No? Hindi siya one, hindi siya obis one, hindi obis two, obis three. Kaya no? nakita nito ko talaga, I was gano'n siya ang my life. No? Na napakalayo ng natin sa buhay na may hirap. So, Mapayat sila, pero yung pare, obis. And something, something is wrong somewhere there, right? Kaya, eh, wala ko sa inyo, nagpapapaya pa kami. Yan na may pila. Okay. Where are the poor in the Philippines? Just to, 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 to brief you, no? Nasa pa ang mahihirap sa Pilipinas? Basically, in Mindanao. Kaya mo ko na sa Mindanao. 
Nine of the 15 poorest provinces are in Mindanao. Yeah. And if we want to help our country, we have to focus development in Mindanao. So, Danao, Mindanao, Sambuanga, Sarangani, Cotabaco, Danao del Norte, Bukidon, Sudan Zulara. All those, the Eastern Visayas, the Ponga, and the United Areas, to mass in the poverty around 7%. No, kind of as a Pinoy. For the last almost six years, the Pinoy, to mass of poverty distributions from 24 to 25 percent, to mass poverty. to address poverty. In spite of the 80 billion pesos a year, the Pinoy Bumos, the Pusakanilang conditional cash transfer to mass poverty in the Philippines. I'm going to tell you in the Philippines, I'm going to inform you, and you're going to have a few minutes. So, I'm going to focus on ang yaman ng Pilipinas sa real estate, sa banking, at saka sa telecommunication. Ito po ang mga nangalaman sa Pilipinas. Those who own real estate, uh, in, uh, real, uh, telecommunication, and uh, banking. Pura sector, as usual, hindi nagbabago, mga isda, number two, magsaka. Hindi nagbabago. Yeah. Ako po, eh, nakapunta ng room after, after 20, Seven years in the priesthood, I had the chat, the privilege to do a Marian, a Marian uh, uh, pilgrimage no, after, 20, after 25 years. I have been to the Holy Land. After 27 years, I have been to Rome because of uh, the benefactors of Catholicism. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tumo na kung sinabi farmer ka, no? iba ang buhay kapag farmer ka, no sa Europe, hindi ka poor, iba, no? and they take the price. Sila na pamakain sa mga tao. Pero sa ating bansa, it should disturb us na kung sino po yung napapakain sa atin araw-araw. Yung napapakain sa atin. Sila pa kailangan kayo niya. The fishermen and the farmers. It's shocking. It's disturbing. Kung sino napapakain sa atin, sila ang mga Sa ibang bansa, iba ang usapan. Ano na sa Europe, sila na hindi ka ng presyo. Kasi kami na mamakain sa tao. Kaya na negosyate ang gobyerno sa mga. At sasubsidize ang gobyerno sa mga. Kaya something is wrong with our fundamentals in this country. Of course, the public threshold is 8,000 in Metro Manila. Pero kulang po yan sa Metro Manila. According to the government, and the food threshold is 5,000. In Metro Manila, ang pasihan ng poverty according to the Government to our our standard church and NGO. At least in Metro Manila, we need twenty thousand, twenty thousand, twenty thousand. Uh, family income, twenty thousand. Family income, monthly, monthly family income. Para masabi yung hindi ka poor. In the poverty line in Metro Manila, twenty thousand. And below that, no. At ilan yung below that, no, para malaman nyo, is 90%. 90% ng Filipino below that. 90%. 90%. Below the 20,000 uh, range of monthly income of Filipinos. Below that, 90% ng Filipino families are below 20,000 monthly income. Then understanding about the poor. You have to understand the poor, no? Hindi ko natin na... Ito yung, the poor are heterogeneous group. No? Different poverty sectors require different poverty relating assistance. Iba iba ang klaseng tugon sa kahirapan. Hindi pwede uh, one-stop shop. Hindi pwede one-size-fits-all. No? The poor need the help of all institutions. Kaya nang tulungtun, dapat ba ang politika? In the context of poverty, dapat ba ang politika? Everybody should help. The poor differ in their perception of the cause of changing their behavior. The poor just get by surviving day to day. Ang mga hirap po kasi, napansin namin, kahit anong tulong ang gawin po, ang kanilang inisip ng day to day. Dito lang natin, we talk about corruption, we talk about climate change, we talk about impact. Ang poor, day to day. Ano pa kasi namin po, Franks? Ano pa ba sa akin ang anak ko? Pag nagkasakit kami, sa kami kung ano daw. Iba yung mindset ng poor. The poor receive civil news. Kung di lang kaya na na balita, they can travel. They have few choices. The poor live misfortune, never far away. 
the poor get into and out of poverty and back to live again. These are some of the studies on the mindset of the poor. Perhaps you can reflect on that in your parishes. So how to understand the mindset of the poor. Pero tignan natin itong uh, research namin, why are they poor? Yeah, it's good for us to talk about it. No? Why are they poor? Hindi lang sila, who are the poor? And where are the poor? Tignan din natin, why are they poor? Okay? Poor health, obviously. Marami po sa kanila ay talaga masasakit eh. No? Because of food, environment, no? ignorance. No? Uh, poor health. Adverse environmental factors, yan. Yeah. Yung kung kaya kinalagyan. Natural disasters, water contamination, overplanting, deforestation. Yung kaya pag may climate change, pag napakainit, sila talaga ang number one victims no? ng climate change. No? Sa Manila nga, inalis yung mga squatter, informal sectors sa mga danger zone. Nilagay sa Rizal. Ngayon, nagbibiglamo po sila. Kasi inalis na sila sa danger zone, sa tabi ng mga pangalik na lugar, dinala naman sila sa death zone. Yeah. Kasi pinaglagyan po sa kanila, yung Arab City, no? Yan naman ay eh, full time. Kaya nagbiglamo nila. Inalis niyo mo kami sa danger zone. Hindi nagbiglamo naman kami sa death zone. Adverse environmental factors. Hard economic conditions, alam po natin niyan, widespread unemployment, low wages, overspending, economic failures of government, no? Yeah, no? Pero meron ginawang uh, study si Richard Wright, no? Yung, yung 1960, no? Maganda ang, maganda ang middle class ng 1960s, eh? 1950s, 1960s. Pero naman is na rega, 1980s and up, no? So, mawa ang, uh, ang sweldo ng mga empleyado. Kasi hindi na bago ang sweldo ng empleyado. Hindi na ba bago. Pero yung kumpanya, umuho na. Umuho na ng mga kumpanya, pero ang swelo ng mga magagawa, hindi na mabago. Minimum lang. Minimum wage. Minimum wage. Hindi yan naman sa'yo. Umuho na ng kumpanya, umuho na ng business, pero ang swelo ng empleyado, hindi na mabago. Minimum wage. Ngayon na, ako sorry, outsource to the agencies. Hard economic conditions. Lack of basic infrastructure and services, especially in the provinces, water supply, electricity, roads, farm to market roads. Lack of infrastructure. Ako pa'y nagpunta lang uh, during the time of Yolanda, ako pa'y nagpunta palagi sa, sa Samar, Purungan, Samar, no, one of the poorest provinces, Category 2. No? Uh, in 100 kilometer stretch, no? sa Burungan Sama, wala akong makikita economic activity. Wala economic activity. Ang nakikita mo lang ay ang laman ng natali po ng mga NGO, local at international. Yeah. Wala akong makikita economic activity sa Burungan Sama, one of the poorest provinces at the Burungan. Okay. Lack of infrastructures and services. Poor access to education. Marami po nila ang pag-aaral. In every 100, children that enter grade 1, only 14% will finish college. Take note, every week. For every 100 children in the Philippines that enter grade 1, only 14% will finish college. Yeah, have 86% na hindi matatapos ang college. Pero napakahala din na matapos ang college. In the Philippines, I'm talking about the Philippines, no? If you finish only elementary in the Philippines, Elementary, 42% will become poor. Kung natapos ka lang elementary sa Philippines. Kung natapos ka ng high school sa Philippines, 30% will become poor. But if you finish college in the Philippines, only 2% will become poor. Kaya mahalaga sa Pilipinas na makatapos ng college ng mga bata. Tingnan natin yung effect po ng K-12. Hindi pa natin ang effect ng K-12. We will see the effect of K-12 in the next two years. Kaya mahalaga na kung naman po tayo na makaparating ng college ang mga bata. Sa Carlos Manila, meron po tayo ng 5,000 scholars in college from Luzon, uh, Visayas, and Mindanao. Meron din po tayo mga Muslim na mga uh, scholars as requested by the bishops of Pasilan and Sulu to promote peace building through education. 
Assalamualaikum. Mayroon tayong mga scholars na MI at saka MN. Strong social factors. Bakit sila mahirap? Strong social factors. Domestic violence, maglalo sa Mindanao. For example, maglalo sa Mindanao. Breakdown of peace and order in Mindanao. Hindi nyo buwan lang sa Mindanao, ang buhay ng tao, kung saan mo magpapatay ang buhay ng tao, sabi na kayo bigyan kong pare sa kapasalan sa Buwanga, 5,000. Just have to pay 5,000. Yan ang presyo ng buhay sa Mindanao. For years. 5,000. Ang hirap eh. They have violence. Of course, alam mo natin yan, bakit sila mahirap? Lack of family planning. Obviously. No? Of course, tayo naman ay uh, uh, responsible parenthood and natural family planning. Pero talaga, so ito, walang napakarami yung anak. Average in urban areas, anin. Anak. Sa probinsya, walo. Meron pa nga sa aming Mandaluyong case in point. May pinuntahan akong waste picker kung kulay ka ng basura, ang anak niya, labing tatlo ang anak niya. Kailangan ko pa siya, ano mga anak ko ba siya? Paskol po, maaaro ko. Kailangan talaga nila na they lack family plan. Kaya kailangan, we have to be very proactive in promoting responsible parenthood and family plan. Siya, marami talaga lang, marami lang. And of course, yung kay Paul Francis, now why are they poor? Ito po yung advocacy ni Paul Francis. At marami rin sa Davos, Switzerland, inaadvocate po ng mga, ng mga socially conscious leaders. No? Why are they poor? Because of income inequality. Very dangerous. Very dangerous according to Pope Francis. Income inequality. Ano po siya nasabi? 1%. Sa Pilipinas, less than 1% yan. Matakin mo, 40 families. Ha? Only 40 families control 76% of our gross domestic product. 40 families, 100 political families, and 40 families in business control our economy. Ano danger na income inequality? Economic exclusion, maraming inasari, ideology of money, obviously, and third violence. Who? Where? Why? Let's talk about why should we care about the food? Why do we need to care about the food? <coughs> Wasted lives. Sayang ang buhay. Alam mo natin yan. Sayang ang buhay. Isa na lang ang pag-aaral. Tinakapag-trabaho. Tinakapag-negosyo. The poor are poor because they lack the opportunity. They lack the opportunity. Wasted lives. Crime, obviously. But in the day, when I was in the lakad sa mga informal settlement in Metro Manila, especially, well, in Manila, ang pinakamahirap na lugar sa Manila, kung hindi niyo po alam, is Maseco. Iyan ang pinakamahirap na Maseco. Hindi dahil nalaman na ka mga tao dyan, dahil sa probinsya. Saan sa probinsya? Maseco. Pangalawa ang pinakamahirap dun do, pangato ng Bocas, na Boca Free in Metro Manila. It's a place where really breathing area for crime, drugs, guns. No, kaya nga yun. Isa niya lang talaga ako sa Telpan, no, sa ilalim ng tulay. Yung kausap ko pala eh, drug pusher. E di makasama akong mga caritas volunteers sa mga babae. After a while, bilapapis sa aming mga lalaki. Naglapasa ng mga mahahawa at kumakulay tayo sino. Kaya nagtakbuhan yung kasama ko ng mga volunteers na iwan ako nag-iisa. Nagkausap ko kasi. Kaya pala yung drug dealer. Kaya sabi yung mga polis na nakasibigyan pa rin. Pwante po sa amin ko, mga polis ko. Eh, tagal na mo namin na siyo, yung makapain niya. Nagagalan niya lang. Yung makasuhan niyo. Pero yung makapain niyo. Kami ng konti. Nagbalik yun yung mga lumayan na sa ako. Mga sister-sisterhood. At sabi, pwante, hindi na natakot. Naglabasa sila lang pa rin kasi nagsigaw ko na. Ang nabasa ka pa rin, hindi ka natakot pa rin. Hindi ko naman sa natin ang nakot ako. Pero yung inalo ko yung ito ko, nasa hindi ko natakot. Hindi ba kayo nabasa na ako pa rin sa grabe ko yun? Hindi na namin na namin, ako wala pa. By the way, tumataas po ang crime natin, ha? Tumataas ang crime natin, by and large, no? 
2013 to 2014 by 50,000 cases, according to PAP. Let me repeat, the mass drug and crime situation in the Philippines by 50% between 2013 to 2014, according to PAP. Of course, why do we need to have the full spread of illness? Among epidemics, like in Africa, Why do we need help? Why do we need help? The poor hopelessness. But kailan na sa tulong na nagiging hopeless. Pag nagiging hopeless na, alam naman natin yung kasabihan, kung nagiging pe, kumakabit sa patalim. No? Patali sila ang nakakaay ng mga demagogs. No? Yung mga magagaling magsalita. Magagaling uh, magkatrak. No? Tulad ng mga health and wealth philosophy. Sabi mo yung health and wealth philosophy. No? Tulad mo kayo sa akin, you will be healthy. So mga kayo sa akin, you will be wealthy. Hindi sila patanay ng mga ibang mga sekta sa kapunto. Sabi ko nga, nagbiyas siya ni Batman, saksi ni Tarna, Kento ni Suma, dito ni Pulapu, sekta ni Wala. Pati sila sulat rin. Nagbiyas siya ni Batman, saksi ni Tarna, Poverty reduction, poverty reduction, iba-iba yan. 
Hindi mo pare-pareho yan. Okay? Pero ang ibig sabihin na. Okay? One is the most common poverty alleviation, works of social services, feeding, visitation of the sick, prisoners, emergency relief, giving, giving, ginagawa most of the time natin yan. Lalo na yung ating mga, mga maligit organizations, no? Ang uh, Christian communities, we do that, no? Uh, give, giving, uh, works of mercy, okay? Feed the sick, uh, feed the hungry, uh, visit the sick, okay? And the homeless. Ito po ang basic uh, work to overcome poverty. Kaya siya po ay, so work, alleviate, maibsan. Hindi na rin inaalis sa kanilang Iniibsan lang natin ang paghihirap ng ating mga kabayan, lalo-lalo na ang victims of, uh, ayun, yung lumans, no? Inutulungan po natin ang mga lumans, no? Uh, they're very much affected by these uh, mining companies in uh, in in Tanda, in Mindanao. 700 po ang nasa, nasa Maynila ngayon, ang mga lumans, na ang nag-aalap niya, nakatago sila ngayon sa Makara, pinapalis sila ng gobyerno, because of the effect, nasa Makara po ngayon. Okay? So, Basically, ang maganda rin ito, we alleviate the pain and suffering. Ang negative niya is, it's really go down. It's one fear. One aid. Stop that. Hindi mo inaalis sa kailangan. Iniisa mo lang ang kanilang pamilya. Yeah, we should not be contented with that. Okay? Just giving them fish. At yan ang mindset ng gobyerno. No? Patronage. Minigay ng pera. Okay. So if you want to Go deeper, for example, sa Caritas, mayroon tayo yung Caritas na mayan. Ito po yung ating uh, disaster and rehabilitation program. Mayroon tayo yung uh, health program at nakapag-asa yung pong uh, sa mga nutrition program in partnership with uh, all the Pinoy you know, kapag-asa. Mayroon natin sa pato kapag-asa. If you want to go deeper, more serious, poverty reduction, reduce poverty. Reduce poverty. Babasa so, natin. Ano ba maganda? Of course, the book will always be with us sa survival. Ang gusto sana po natin ay single digit poverty. Single digit poverty. According to the government, 25% ang mahirap sa Pilipinas. According to the government. One and every four ay mahirap sa Pilipinas. Pero yung, yung kategory ng, ng gobyerno, 25%. Ito yung poorest of the poor. Which is 6,000 and below. Ang income nila, 6,000 pesos a month and below. Hindi pa sinasama dyan ang entrepreneurial poor. Hindi pa sinasama yung working poor. Pag sinama mo yan, nabot ang 90% niya. Pag sinama niya yung mga minimum wager, at saka yung entrepreneurial poor, akin ang 90% na kayo sa Pilipinas. Shocking. Idea is single digit poverty. Single digit poverty. Ibaba natin ang desktop niya. Okay? So reducing education, preventive health, livelihood, Microfinance, kaya nakakita tayo, marami kayo nakita tayo ng finansito. Kagaya ng card bank, ASA, cooperatives. Di ba, may kasabihan po tayo? If a person is hungry, to not give him fish. Ano yung sabi? Teach them how to fish. Yan ang first level. First level. Ano yung second level? Yung second level po yan. Kahit malunod siya mag-isa, na lang siya kami, pangingista. Walang bangka, walang sabuan, walang luto. Kaya kulang pa rin po, nakarulong siya pangingista. Kailangan i-provide siya lang at kami pangingista. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Pero kulang pa rin yan. Kulang pa rin yan. Bakit kulang pa rin yan? Meron po bagong version niya. Ano yung third version? Marunong na siya pangingista. May gabi na nga siya ng pangingista. Eh pagdating naman ng gaga, walang maista. Bakit? Eh kinuha na lahat ng mga Big shoulders. Yan ang nangyari sa inyo lahat na ang daming bangka. Hindi ka tayo alam na ha, bawat mga isda eh. Ano naman mga isda? Ano naman mga isda? Kasi nakukuha ko ng mga big shoulders. In the host, with the congressman, with the governor, and the mayor. So, ano kayo na gawin? We have to provide a fishing industry. An opportunity for the poor to fish for themselves. Kaya, kung gusto niyo parang more serious, although meron tayo, ito, ito pa yung programa ng Caritas, meron tayong scholarship, meron tayong skills program, 
meron tayong uh, margins, uh, yung pong duration in time, meron tayong uh, finance at saka workers cooperative. Meron meron po tayong workers cooperative at finance and capital. But if you want to really be serious, poverty eradication. You have to address the root causes of poverty. At alam po natin yan, uh, poverty is uh, truly structural. The poor are poor because of the structures that we have created. Man-made structures are not pro-poor. Ang mga batas natin ay hindi tumutulog sa mga the structures in business, the structures of government, and social institutions are not really helping the poor. Yan ang problema natin. Okay. Now we have to address politics, economics, and culture. Paano kaya natin gagawin yan? Malapit na naman eleksyon. Sino kaya ang uh, presidentials that can help us? Ang problema po natin sa Pilipinas, mapag saliit ng mga kapitalista ang mga no? gaya nila ni na Henry C ng mga ayalas na dyan they support all candidates they support all candidates in order to protect their vested interests yeah something's wrong with our political economic structures yung mga sinasabi natin structural sin yeah. yeah you have to address politics, economics, and culture. And this structural injustice. Of course, action in behalf of justice, as we know that, and uh, participation in transformation of society is constitutive to the proclamation of the gospel. Without justice, there is no authentic proclamation of the gospel. An opposite of injustice, I just is. Integrating justice. We have to do something. Action in behalf of justice. There are other times when we have to change our leaders. I mean, Pope Francis, no? But we cannot say nothing. As long as the problems of the poor are not radically resolved by rejecting the absolute autonomy of markets and financial speculation and by attacking the structural causes of inequality. No solution will be found for the world's problems or for the matter to any problems. We have to address the root causes of inequality, the structures in business, the structures in government. Ito po yung mga advocacy na ginagawa all over the world. Kilo sa 99, led by Bishop Broderick, against the 1%. Ang karitas na pa-promote din ang Nomic Friday kasi ang isa sa mga nagpo-contribute sa global warming ay ang too much consumption of um, meat. Kaya mawasan daw po natin ang pagkain ng baloy, karne at baka. Nomic Friday at least. Ang contribute in global warming. Huwag kang magnakaw, political advocacy against corruption in government. Ang corruption daw sa government Hindi lang daw under the table, hindi lang over the table, including the table. Nag-lagay kami nito eh. Ganun po kami sa Mega Manila. Nag-lagay kami ng mga tarpulin ang buong magnakaw. Ang laki na yung ilagay lang yung San Carlos Gate eh. San Carlos Gate, ah, pati sila yung pader na ng San Carlos Seminary sa EDSA. Ang laki na yan, huwag kang magnakaw! After one week, minakaw! Kasi makakakin ang yun! Ang sabi naman mga security guard, yung pumahalit na ako, galing pa eh. Ang bawal daw kito yan! Alam na natin kung ano yun. Ano yun kasi yun eh. Pag-inex ko si guard ng pagla, ito ang guard na! Minakaw mo yung ating billboard na huwag kang magnakaw! Sino din nakaw? Eh, ganit daw sila eh. Ang sila mo tagalit ko, sana ng Diyos yun ah. Huwag kang magnakaw. Pamagalala ka nila. Talagin natin ko, may respect tayo. Ay, may pagawa ko ka na mas malaki pa! Sa Guadalupe, sa Edsa, mas malaki pa! No? This time, nilagay yung picture ni Pope Francis. May ganda sa akin. So far, di pa nila nakaw. Wala na nakaw. Wala na isang buwan na. Wala magnakaw, no? Against corruption. 
Okay, so let's look at it. So nothing to. So far, are we learning? Yes. I'm learning. At saka, we learning. Okay, po, hindi ba sa inyo? Learning, iba sa atin. I'm learning, iba sa atin. We learning. Okay. Narinig na natin yan. Kung na rinig rinig bilang po. So, we have innate poverty. That is the nature of every human being. Pangalawa, mayroon pati ng poverty. That we have to help each other overcome. Okay? Ang maganda niya rin, parang hindi kong sinasabi, yung aling dictum nung na the only American president, sino ba yun? Si John, 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 John Henry. Mayroon ang famous dictum si John J.F.K. The only American Catholic. Ang sabi niya, if the problem is man-made, we can solve it. If the problem is man-made, we can solve it. Yan ang palagi kong mundala. O pag may nagpero kami problema, palagi mo tinatanong sa mga kasama ko, yung mga problema natin, galing sa Diyos, o dahil ang gawalan ng tao. Pag sinabi nyo, gawalan ko ng tao, may solution niya. Pag gawalan ng tao, may solution niya. Nakulang lang tayo ng creativity and innovation. That is always my guiding principle. If the problem is man-made, palagi may solution. Kaya, power 